In this edition of About Lee, I talked with my friend Sophie Del Valle, producer and director, who helped Lee with the translation of Les Mal à peine recouverts. This is an intimate conversation about some insights about Lee's time in Paris, France, and the impact that she had on a young Sophie when they met when she was just 22 years old. I hope you enjoy this. It's a little informal. It's also in French and English. The English translation is, Objects in the Mirror are Closer Than They Seem, an original one-woman play by the late, great Lee Chamberlain, my mother. Oh, hello, everyone. This is um, Erica, uh, Lee's daughter. And today I have a very, very special guest with me. This is Sophie Del Valle. Sophie is from Avignon, France. And she is someone who I've known for a long, long time, about 30 years now. And she's also someone that... Uh, knew Lee very well. I have a very fond memory of introducing my mother to Sophie and another friend. I think uh, we were going for like a lunch uh, over at, uh, at this person's house. And I remember what a wonderful, warm welcome Sophie and her friend gave to Lee. And I thought this was in Paris and I thought, okay, everything is great. Now mom has two new French girlfriends. This is fantastic. So uh, the purpose of today's conversation is just to give another perspective of Lee's time in France and kind of to fill in the gaps, you know, things that, of course, that I may not know. I always discover something new when we have a guest here, uh, Lee Chamberlain's Playwrights in Project. Sophie, welcome. Welcome. Thank to... you. <laughs> we have a great time at your place thank in California. You. Oh, thank you. Yay. I'm glad you're here. And it's uh, very emotional for me to uh, to think about Lee that I knew very well, and it was we had so much time together and so much fun, so much conversation. So it's nice to be looking for Lee <laughs> with you. <laughs> Uh, I'm really glad you're mm -hmm. here. I'm really glad. Mm -hmm. Well, first, I think it would be nice for you to tell the audience a little bit about yourself. You can say it in French first if you want, and then say it in English. Bien, je suis devenue réalisatrice euh, dans les années 2000, mais on va dire que mes premières réalisations un peu plus officielles euh, sont en 2007. Donc, euh, ça fait 12 ans, j'ai envie de dire, que je fais vraiment des films. Euh, auparavant, j'étais ce qu'on appelle script ou assistant réalisateur. Et puis, je faisais aussi un peu d'art vidéo, un peu des, des, des choses un peu expérimentales, plus des, des choses plus indépendantes. Euh, donc, dès 2007, j'ai commencé à faire et des courts-métrages de fiction et des courts-métrages documentaires. Euh, mon premier long métrage documentaire date de 2014 et là en 2019 euh, sort mon nouveau film sur un réalisateur marocain qui s'appelle Mostafa Berkane. Formidable. In English, try. Yeah. So uh, I'm a director. Um, I think uh, my real career of director begins in 2007, before I did more or less some experimental movies, art videos, or some forms, uh, some performances. And uh, I was also script supervisor and uh, assistant director. And then in uh, 2007, I did a feature short film and documentary short films. In 2014, I did my first um, documentary feature move after move and this year 
I have the pleasure to show to the audience my new documentary feature about this uh, famous Moroccan director, Mustafa Darkawi. So the title is Freely, Mustafa Darkawi. Mm. You're in a similar uh, field as Lee was. I mean, she did theater, but she also did film as a movie yeah, actress sure. in her day and also uh, was a director in the theater, of course. She was a complete artist because she, she was also an actress, a singer. Uh, you could really, uh, she was, she loved arts and you, she, she was an aesthetic, so it was so so inspiring to to speak with her uh, to see how she worked. She, she was very professional. Me, I was I mean I, I'm, I was much more younger than me, so I was uh, a bit fascinated to the to the to this lady. <laughs> mm -hmm. The first time I met her, I think uh, I had something like twenty two years old, or, mm -hmm. so I was very young, mm -hmm. and she was like. Uh, I mean, she was kind of a diva, your mother, anyway. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> so, so the first time you met Lee was, it was where? With, it was a, a big event on Canal Saint Martin, uh, Glamour Jazz. Glamour Jazz. So you you were dressed as a Josephine Baker, I think. You had a funny dress. I think it was a Josephine Baker style. No, I wasn't. You were so much short skirt yeah, and it... some feathers all over. No? I don't remember wearing any feathers. This is what happened. There's a, a model singer named Tommy Garrett. And he wanted to make an event that was a little bit out of the ordinary in, in uh, that which you would see in France, where he invited models and professional singers to to sing, you know, and they had a band, a backing band behind them. And I remember that there was one of the cast members from Bubbling Brown Sugar mm -hmm. that was in Paris. That was a, a Broadway show that was very, very successful. And uh, one of the, the performers that was in that happened to be in Paris. And so my mother happened to be visiting me. And uh, Tommy got wind of this. And so he um, wanted my mother and I to do a number together, to do a song together. And we did Les Deux Amours. That's what we did. Yeah. We didn't. I did not dress like Josephine Baker. <laughs> but no. the song was. But from... we did that song. Which actually, my mother had a lot of trepidation but... of doing. She actually didn't want to do that song because she said this song is like a sacred song here, <laughs> and if we don't do it right, you know, there were different couturiers, you know, that donated clothes for us to wear on stage. So this is a thing. It was a mixture of well, la glamour, you know, yeah, it was very la elegant, mode. Very elegant party. With that. Full of people. Very nice place. And so I, the first time I saw Lee, it, she was on stage. It was very uh, nice because you you, song, you you sing with her. Mm -hmm. And it was very uh, emotional to see the daughter and the mother. I mean, it was really great. It oh, was you really, liked it? Of course. Oh, she was worried. No. no. Was Mom was really worried that, you know, she wasn't sure. She wasn't sure how the people felt about it because, of course, the French, they are very, yeah. you know, they're not like <laughs> the Americans, like, yeah, woo, woo, you know, they're not like that except when they go and me, see something. Except me and my friends because we were, I mean, there was a little hall, I Oh yeah, Elodie, Elena. I think we were all of us. Um, we were more funky young people. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Lee's yeah, I remember. I still remember. Of course, I. Uh, Lee's very happy to know that. <laughs> and then we went to Elodie and Elena's place, mm -hmm. uh, and we had a breakfast or uh, something like something that. Something like brunch or brunch. Breakfast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, Rue Saint Maur. Hmm. Uh, C'est dans quel, uh, quel arrondissement? Uh, 
10. The 10th. Uh, limit 11. Okay. Always a limit 11, but uh, the 10th. Uh, you have the 11, the 19th, behind Belleville. Goncourt. Okay, Goncourt. So we were young girls, very uh, enthusiastic uh, to to meet the great uh, lady, the great American lady. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had fun, mm -hmm. and it was lovely and uh, great time together. But I mean, it's a bit. I mean, we didn't speak about something really special, but just like uh, have good feelings, good vibes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, I remember. Likes. I remember laughter, mm. and uh, yeah, that was the that was a great thing about uh, Lee. It was a great thing about Mom is that she could meet any of my friends, and just, you know, just like slip right into uh, like a like a relationship. You know, she just had a great sense of fun, and she had a yeah. I think her sense of humor, her sense of humor yeah, gave yeah. her like kind of a youthful. A youthful spirit you know she wasn't like stuffy no. like that when she was meeting someone and of course she loved she loved France and she loved Paris so how long did you know me so you met in yeah. 1992 but and... there was a gap in between because I left Paris and we went back with Zakara we rented a flat in 98 we, we were still uh, living in, in Morocco but we, we, we had a we had a flat in Paris in the meantime. And I remember uh, when we had this flat between 98 and 2000, she went to springtime in Paris because she liked it springtime in Paris. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. she, yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, like the song. <laughs> uh, and uh, I remember her writing, begin, the beginning of uh, writing there. I think it should be. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it was probably the beginning of a theater play. I'm not even. I think it was well, the beginning of the theater play or another writing, maybe another script. Yeah, but I, I remember she was Rue Léon Faux in a small flat that she rented, and we visited. Uh, we had. I mean, maybe not a daily meeting, but something like a weekly meeting. So mm -hmm. have a coffee there, have a dinner at our place, have a lunch at our place. We were like uh, much more um, uh, have conversation. I remember that I introduced people to them, like uh, an American coach who was involved in to theater in uh, in Paris or some actress in France because she wanted to meet uh, other people. Right. And um, I remember also we went to see, uh, to go on the um, West landscape in uh, Chateau de la Loire, in this mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I had a friend, Serge Genel, he, he was a teacher of theater, also actor, also theater director. Mm -hmm. And uh, you had a beautiful house close to the Loire, mm -hmm. and your mother was very interesting to see the place because uh, and to meet also Serge, but to see how it can be to have a kind of place to invite people outside Paris. So we had this, mm -hmm. this trip. We rent a small car. We went on an highway, and we spent few wonderful days with Serge and Zakaria. Uh, I show you these photos. Yes. Um, that was this time, 98, 99. Oh, early. When Lee eventually established or founded her Playwrights In project, you notice on the logo, it's, it's like the country and there's like, you know, a little house like that. There's a tree. She definitely wanted to pursue that idea of a retreat for playwrights, that they could, you know, come and be in a relaxed atmosphere away from the stress and the distractions yeah. of uh, the city. Of course, eventually mounting a reading in a more urban area, but at least during the time of the uh, revisions and the writing and the revisions and working with the director and, you know, the actors mm -hmm. to, to have that. So 
it's it's interesting to hear you say that and also just to back up a little bit more uh, when she started coming to France at in 98 she was still living in California yeah sure she was in Santa Monica exactly. I think It's what I said to you. I remember really a sentence of uh, Lee that she said, it's not the same thing to write by hand with a, a stylo plume. Mm -hmm. uh, with a pen? But not a pen like that with the ink, you know? I don't know. Ah, an, uh, a an ink on, pen. Ink mm -hmm. pen. Mm -hmm. It's not the same than to write uh, and to type with a computer. It's not the same writing. It's not the same movement. It's not the same rhythm. You, you no. don't write in the same way. Your words are not coming. I'm, I really fix uh, this idea in my head because, yeah. of course, writing is a question of rhythm and uh, of movement, of uh, brief. And that was very well explained since the beginning. Mm -hmm. She had uh, just the pen and she was like saying, every morning I wake up, I'm working a few hours and after I do something else. But it's like, um, my discipline, discipline, uh, like your routine, like your, like, like your gym, like your yoga. I mm. don't know, you know, things that you do every, every morning, and uh, like you practice, you practice, you practice, and mm -hmm. yeah, and that's true. Uh, now uh, I could say that that's the best way because the morning you fresh. Um, if you are beginning to uh, do something else like uh, administration papers uh, cleaning and everything you lose you you are losing everything you really should do the morning when your spirit just wake up fresh and just have all the answer that you wanted to know from your dreams you know yes <laughs> Make it that's clear. true and just go and more you work every day more you are you get focus and you get uh, if you are losing one morning two mornings after it's been it's become a bit hard to, to get to, back into the story to relaunch so she was like very well in paris because every morning she has a writing and then see friends have coffee and walk around Paris is fun to, to go to movies, theater, exhibition. I mean, we have a lot of things to do. It's a very cultural city. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of beauty is everywhere. Clowning around Lee and Sophie's award show. I think she see me as a little clown. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. I think she found me very funny. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's different. <laughs> Anti clown. I mean, this song clown. Okay, okay. I don't know English. Okay. Well, well you were. Was, you, she she found you to be funny because if yeah. we say that she found you to be a little clown, that's not no. necessarily ah, okay. complimentary. But ce n'est pas la même sens en français, peut-être en anglais. So I felt very free with her to to how you say that to to augment it. Mon, ma, mes capacités de comique. <laughs> <laughs> Donc j'ai fait beaucoup de... Voilà. Uh, she let me really free to, to be this funny, to, to show my funny uh -huh. partition. Uh -huh. And for me, she was a bit also the same because she was <laughs> really doing a lot of <laughs> funny things. So we were a great couple, like a great uh, couple joking together. Yeah, Laura and Hardy. This yeah. time we did some funny Polaroid. I had many uh, films, Polaroid films, and uh, we did a serial together. Oh, really? Do you still have those? I show you. No, you didn't show me. Um, okay, so Sophie's going to send me those later. Yeah, one of the famous, uh, <laughs> one of the famous Polaroid, Polaroid that we did together. It's uh, we are receiving uh, awards, prizes, oh. awards from I don't know which uh, prestigious uh, <laughs> <laughs> honor, and there is a very funny one because she's like uh, she had a sirena, a gold sirena, and she's like uh, 
receiving a prize <laughs> like <laughs> really thank like, you <laughs> thank you thank yeah. you no like wow really and me i'm just like so proud with my papers and wrong so i would not send you i thought i no i've never you. seen those no, see on. the things you no, learn you, 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 your memory no no i would remember <laughs> that no i would remember that thanks to sophie for sending over these polaroids of her Lee and Zakaria enjoying an imaginary award ceremony in Paris circa 1998. And she loved the face that I did. She could not stop laughing with the face I did. <laughs> By the way. Oh, well, so, that's great. So there was, that a, was this time, uh, an imaginary award ceremony documented in Polaroids. That's yeah. very funny. That's she great. received the best one, the Golden Serena, mm -hmm. and me the, the rolling paper. In this portion, we talk to Sophie about the translation of Les Mao à peine recouvert. So now speaking of writing, uh, this is something I found the other day, which I didn't realize had something to do with Sophie. Uh, this is why I love having these conversations, but mom had worked on a play for a long, long time called Objects in the Mirror Are Closer Than They Seem. And she had a French translation done, which is called Les Mots à peine recouvertes. Version Française, and so I just, this, this date on this is December 2005. Of course, later on, this play would eventually be produced at the Kitchen Theater in Ithaca, New York. But I didn't know, Sophie, your role in this, in finding the, the titre or the title yeah, or just the translation the of the title. Yeah, we, we spoke a lot about, I read in English and then I read in French. Uh, she had a translator. I don't. I didn't. I don't know the translator actually. It's a friend of friend that found the translator, but I never met the the, the woman. Mm -hmm. But um, since the beginning, before I mean the translation, we spoke a lot about uh, about a, a theater play, and I proposed uh, the title to to Lee, and she was very happy of this title, and she kept it even if there was a translator after and in between. And, um, and she really, it's a bit far away from the English title. There is, I mean, no relation. But uh, in French, it sounds very interesting because les mots, uh, you, you add few, few meanings with les mots. It could be the words, uh, it could be the disease, and it could be the dead. The, the dead. Yeah. So it's a lot about uh, burial. I mean, it's yes, kind of it Antigone, yes, uh, it is. new Antigone uh, theater play. And, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good. It it is it is similar to Antigone. Mm -hmm. It is similar to Antigone because in the play Antigone or Antigone, comme on dit en français, of course, our heroine's struggle is to have her brother buried instead of just being left on the battlefield to be eaten by vultures. Of course, this play, Objects in the Mirror are Closer Than the Seam. As Sophie's pointing out, the whole premise of it is about the need to bury the dead properly, the need to honor them properly, the importance of doing that, but also, um, you know, the toll of war. Uh, there's a section in here, a very tragic uh, character whose son becomes a child soldier, you know, uh, how this affected the family. Anyway, there, she's playing many different roles, you know, in this play, about, about six or seven different personalities and talking about um, death and war and the value of life from many different angles. So you read the play. It was one of the first because uh, we were, I, I I saw the work in progress, mm -hmm. and uh, and I really remember she was working year by year to. Uh, I mean, she she worked a lot to to really give the best and find other ideas. It was like a cisle, I mean, like dentals. I don't know. She was like really, lace. Yeah, she was really uh, doing the work for years. To uh, I can understand this kind of things that you're 
you want to do it perfectly. And um, but the French title was found pretty early. <laughs> that, that, that part yeah, was that easy. Was, uh, not easy, but I mean, <laughs> because also à peine recouvert, uh, it's uh, you know just uh, on the ground, just it's just a, on there is just a veil. It, it means a bit that just a veil on the. It's not a lot of. It's not a lot of It's just a veil that you can remove. Pour voir la vérité. Mm -hmm. C'est ça qui était assez joli. C'est que sur quelque chose de très lourd, comme la terre, l'enterrement, le, les, les funérailles, ben à peine recouvert, c'est juste que tu peux délicatement regarder ce qu'il y a derrière les choses. Mm -hmm. Derrière un voile, comme le miroir en fait. It, it gives yes. the idea of the mirror. Yes, yes, yes. Be, behind the mirror. Uh, revelation, yeah. you're revealing something mm -hmm. that's yeah, hidden. Exactly. Yeah, that's very, very wonderful. Yeah, mate, it was the so French. The French are so uh, yeah. insightful, you know. No, <laughs> yeah. no but see, I, I find, you know, there's a kind of uh, delicacy there. And I that's think that's true. one of the reasons why uh, Lee, Loves you know, it. enjoyed yeah. being in France so much. Of course, she spent her, some of her student years there studying at La Sorbonne and all of that, but she, you know, she had an appreciation of, you know, this, this side. It's a great, it's a great culture for writing. It's a great culture for writing and for writing books. That's for sure. Poetry and plays and this type of thing. France has a great tr tradition of that. And Mali had a love of words. She had yeah. a love of words and a, lo a love of meaning. It's richer when you have two languages, when you can switch between English, French, or French, Portuguese, or I don't know. When sure. you can mix, you can, that's really develop your sense of poetry, of writing. And I think it's for that she was so comfortable uh, in France. And we were really a good supportive people. Mm -hmm. um, I think me at this time, I was uh, in 99, I was... Uh, uh, I have some luck to focus on things, and it was a great example to see Lee like every you know every morning, every year, like mm. keep working on her art, on her writing, on a piece. I mean, it was interesting to see how it works. In fact, it's a lot of works, daily work, yeah, and never ending sometimes. You know, and never, right. yeah, it's it's a <laughs> it's path of occupation. every day. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a lot of things. That's a lot of, uh, that's the part that people don't what see. It's like, you know, your mom is on TV and she's on film. And blah, blah, blah. I'd be like, well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's cool, but it's work. You know, she had a very, um, it's very different from the celebrity of today. And that she always regarded because she had that training, I think, in the theater also when you, you know, you have to go in every day, you know, you have to go in every day, you have to rehearse the play, you have to learn your lines, you have to learn the timing, you have to learn your cues, you have to learn how to take direction, you have to learn how to interact with the other actors, you have to learn where to stand on the stage, you know, because the lighting or, you know, all these different elements, you know, that are creating the illusion of the space and the time, uh, whatever atmosphere it is you're trying to create, uh, on the play, you know, the music, uh, how to relate to the audience, you know, how not to be sucked in and distracted by the audience. There's so many things, you know, that you have to master, you know, in, in order to be successful on that. In that sense, the theater is a great training ground for whatever else, you know, you may, you may choose to do in in the performing arts at least that's that's what i got out of it as a child you know watching her now that uh yeah work yeah. hard work and what also i think it's very um how to say very strong in her personality it's that uh she was not a fast uh evident worker like obvious. she could obvious she yeah. she didn't want to make obvious things quickly done and just like writing stuff, putting on stage. She was really trying to uh, overcome uh, um, her own limits or um, I don't know, to reach the point that she wanted to reach. So that means 
when you do this so long work, because that took, I don't know, I mean, a years, decade, a decade, at least it feels yeah. like 10 years. So when you, when you, I mean, when you write for a decade, that means you are not, you are not anymore a celebrity. I mean, on the spotlights, you are not uh, somebody, uh, you have not the recognition. You are really in your little office on your desk, <laughs> writing, writing, and never see the end. And mm -hmm. she was strong enough to do that. It's, it's rare. I mean, it's not uh, because she's a professional. It's not like she's doing that beside something. It was her work. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, true. She wanted to become a writer, so yeah. she did everything to became uh, to become a writer uh, because she was an actress, more or less, yes. more known to be an actress. And um, I hope this fear to play could live after her death. I mean, I hope some directors could, could be interesting. In My mother was very very and i mean very <laughs> very <laughs> very particular about the context you know of the way her work was presented hmm. i mean it had to be the right way yeah that's it i can imagine <laughs> you know there was no nope she had a very, very specific, very specific vision on, on the way that she wanted and she had a re her reasons as to why things would be done, you know, was it this way as opposed to that way. And this is my attempt to try and understand her mind a little bit more, because if I had the opportunity to sit down with my mother today, I would ask her more about the reasons for setting things up in a certain way. But I think that that part of her personality, you know, that, that part of her intelligence, that part of her brilliance is linked to her talent as a director. Because of course she, she also wrote a couple of plays and she also directed a, a couple of plays. So this is a very, very interesting point really uh, in artistic presentation as to why you would do something a certain way or as, or, and maybe the longer way and not the quick way and the reasons for doing that. And I'm sure, you know, she was thinking always, you know, of the psychology of the audience, of the person watching it, yeah. where she wanted to take them, what she wanted them to see, you know, what kind of experience uh, she was, trying to give them the emotions that she was trying to draw out of them mm -hmm. that's was really important and um and her subject matter is a little complex <laughs> so um very very interesting um i went to california to oh. see her with my son as she picked up uh, us at the la airport with her nice uh, beetle uh, decapotable. Oh yeah, she had a little <laughs> orange bug, a little orange Volkswagen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she was so, she, she described her in her car and was really bad, so happy with sunglasses, <laughs> decapotable, like choo choo choo. Sunroof. <laughs> yes, yeah, sunroof. And uh, we went to LA, to Santa Monica, all the coast. And mm -hmm. oh, she drove you? Yeah, uh -huh. she was perfect with us. You know? uh -huh. We had a great tour, so we, we stayed at her home. How long did you stay? Maybe four or five days. Wow. Like that. Yeah. So um, then the, that was this idea for Lee to go to Nantes. Uh, Whose idea was that to go to Nantes? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, that was my mistake. But I did also the same mistake then, Lee, because in 2005, no, I, I said Nantes, it could be a good option for you, Lee, because Nantes has a very bad history with um, esclavage. With Mont slavery, with the slavery. origins of slavery in France are in Nantes. And I think I said to Lee, maybe the city uh, had the idea to repair uh, this past and make something 
better, something nice. So maybe something could... cultural. And Nantes at this time was considering as little Paris. It was a cheaper rent. You could have more space. Mm -hmm. uh, you could. Uh, it, it's pretty cultural life also. Mm -hmm. And me, I was in this ID, and because I'm provincial person, I, I, I didn't want also to stay in Paris. And uh, in 2005, after my trip in America and Mexico uh, and Morocco, a um, long, long trip with a baby, we decided um, to move all the family at Nantes. But <laughs> after three months, I went back to Paris because I just see that it's not so evident to enter in Nantes life and to get, I mean, to, to be part of Nantes. It's a bit, it's not like Paris, it's not like south of France. I was like uh, feeling a bit uh, exiled. Like yeah, the the people. My uh, Lee described it to me that the culture in Nantes is more closed. Yeah, if you're not from there and you haven't grown up there, and they don't, you know, they don't really know you. They they're not really that open. It's uh, I, they're just not that open. And of course, for someone who's an artist and working in the theater, that definitely needs the engagement of other people and the interests of other people. That is a very, very frustrating and depressing situation to be in. And I remember her being there and trying to make it work. I went to go see one gentleman who had some kind of theater, and it seemed like he was open to it. But then in the end, no, he was not open to it. So she just wasn't getting anywhere. She wasn't making any inroads yeah. there and had actually planned to go back to Paris, which eventually she did. But because you know, because she was there and because she had paid a certain amount of rent already to be there, uh, that's where she brought uh, the playwright, Yusef Miller. That's where she brought the director for the reading, Judy Ann Elder. And that's eventually where the other actors came, you know, to work with her and then eventually staging the reading in Paris at the Théâtre de Nelle. Here's a photo of Pip stage reading for Youssef Miller. It's about cheap, I think, at the Théâtre de Nelle, September 19th, 2011. I should say that I was not anymore in Paris because I left uh, Paris in 2011 to go to South to live in Provence, mm -hmm. my hometown. Mm -hmm. And so uh, she was in Nantes and I was in South of France, something like the up, very long way. I mean, very... and. We plan all the time to see each other. I said, Lee, come. I, I live in a beautiful space. Uh, I was mm -hmm. living in between lavenders. You know, oh, really nice. Wonderful. And uh, she didn't come. I didn't come neither to none. So we just uh, have phone calls and some mails. But uh, I think. And then she was back in Paris. And so I see her uh, in a new flat in 17. Uh, close to uh, and when she says 17 Parmenso, she means the 17th arrondissement the 17th quarter um, and then I see uh, she had a very nice flat she was very happy in this flat uh, she, she was like uh, living again you know like she, a breath of fresh air <laughs> yes. yeah are very happy to see each other to see that things are going better yeah and then Mia went back to South and she went to America, but I didn't know about what's going on in America for her. And um, in, in 2014, I think it was March, mm -hmm. March or April, the beginning of springtime. Yeah, it was March. Uh, I went. I had uh, I I just passed Paris because I, I had to to go for shooting in the east part of France, and so before my trip, um, I just um, I just called her. We had a meeting, and then she opened the door and she was she just said yes, yeah, Sophie. I didn't say nothing, but she was very slim, like not not. Uh, 
elfy slim. Very really, skinny. Very skinny. Yes. She and, was sick. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I said nothing, but I was a bit shocked because I thought, oh, she had there's um, elf problems all around. And she told me that she didn't want to tell me before, but she was she had a cancer and she chose um, alternative therapy. It's many plants and she was like, but she has something she was suffering today or two days ago with her belly. She doesn't know. So maybe she, she's going to go to the doctor, but she was very positive. Uh, and uh, so uh, we asked, we asked Zakaria, I think, to, to take care about the coach. Then she could go to the doctor. I don't remember. It was something about organizing things. And so I spent my afternoon of a few hours with her. And that was the last time we spent hours together because me, I went away for my shooting. And then I, I, I knew through you and through Zakaria that she went away in America to, uh, to go to hospital. Right. She was sick in March, fact. April, May. So she, she, you saw her in March and she passed away at the end of May. Yeah. So you saw her about... And I call her... Uh, two and a half months before she died. Yeah. You spoke to her on the phone? Yeah, it was a small talk, very emotional. What did you talk I... about? Do you remember? Oh, yeah. Very emotional. Mm-hmm. Um... I think it was to say goodbye to each other. Okay. It's hard to talk about. Yeah, because you feel like you feel the emotions <laughs> again. Yeah. And when you feel emotion, you are not able to talk anymore because <laughs> you're crying. Yeah, like rrr, 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 movements. I try to to, uh, to face the camera. Yeah. But uh, well, I'm she... glad that you had that opportunity to to talk. That's I wanted great. to do that to say say that uh, I love her. Well, well, she was like a great spirit for me, very inspiring, mm-hmm. like a mother. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what I told her. Oh, mm. I know she liked that. Well, I guess we'll, we'll end this way, is that uh, Sophie told me that the day that my mother died, well, in France, it was La Fête des Mères, it's Mother's Day, and also it was uh, La Jour de Saint-Sophie, it was the, in France, you know, they have different days for different saints. They celebrate, you know, the different saints. And uh, so for some reason, mom decided to to leave on the day for Saint Sophie. Which and Sophie means uh, wisdom. Sophie means wisdom. So I think that you and Lee were very good friends. Yeah, <laughs> I was kind of, I feel as a spiritual daughter. <laughs> spiritual daughter, yeah. Well, in France, the French spiritual, the daughter. French spiritual <laughs> daughter. Yeah, yeah, she really uh, uh, let uh, traces, uh, tr- uh, confiance. No, uh, tra- des traces en France. She really let something for French people too, so that more people can can get a hold of it and perhaps study it. Uh, maybe there is an an actress out there who has the skill and the talent to be able to do, you know, les mots à peine découverts. Yeah, it will be nice to present in Festival Avignon. I mean, it's the right place to yeah. to make a reading or to make the field play or even readings have place in Avignon. You can do it yeah. And you have um, also, it's what I said to, to Lee, there is a very good place next to Avignon, La Chartreuse, the Villeneuve Les Avignons, and it's a place for it's a residency for theater writers. Ah, but nationally, I mean, it's nationally uh, recognized. Yeah, internationally recognized. Even it's uh, the, the place to, um, and you can work on stage. You can write. Many things are open there. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for supporting Lee Chamberlain's Playwrights in Project. Au revoir, à bientôt. Bye-bye. Until the next time, (laughs) Sophie Del Valle, thank you very much. Thank you, too.